There's a new PS5 update, but you might want to wait a couple days before installing it. So you guys might have caught our video a few days ago where we talked about the brand new April update for the PS5. Now the biggest feature that came along with it is the ability to move your games to an external hard drive and then move them back to the console when you want to play them instead of deleting games and then re-downloading them when you want to play them, which probably would take a whole lot longer. And if you didn't catch that video, it's because you're not PS ready. And if you want to get PS ready, make sure you're subscribed with your notifications set to all. Anyway, that update has since been released and there's actually even more features included with it than we initially thought, which is pretty cool. So we'll run down all of those in a minute, but you might want to wait a little bit before installing it because a few people over on the PlayStation 5 subreddit are talking about some pretty bad stuff that's happening to their console thanks to this update. The biggest thing I'm seeing people complain about is actually a feature, but it's pretty easy to turn off if it's bugging you. So one of the features that came with the PS5 is the ability for when you turn on the PS5 console, your TV will turn on as well, and then if you turn off your console, your TV will turn off. Well, they set it to be defaulted on with this update, so when you turn on your TV, now your PS5 boots up, and then when you turn your TV off, your PS5 turns off. So if you don't like that, if you don't want your PS5 running when you're using your Xbox, or just watching a movie on Disney Plus on your Roku or something, you just head into your settings and turn the feature off. It's super simple. All you have to do is go into settings, then system, then look for HDMI link, and it gets pretty granular on what you can turn off and on. I just turned it all off because I don't want my PS5 turning on every time I turn on my TV. It's pretty annoying. This happens to a few people with every update, but unfortunately some people are installing the update, then hitting an error, and then their PS5 is bricked. And honestly, the only way you're going to be able to figure that one out is to try and put it into power safe mode or then call Sony and try and get it replaced. It's a sucky sort of way to fix that problem, but it's the only way to fix that problem. Thankfully, there's only a couple people in the support thread on Reddit complaining about it, so so it doesn't seem to be a widespread issue just yet. And the last big thing people are complaining about is that they're seeing dramatically slower download speeds on their PS5s after this update. And this really just sounds like an ISP issue, so if you have this problem, make sure you power cycle your PS5, power cycle your router and your modem. The best way to do that on the router and modem is just to unplug it and wait 30 seconds and plug them both back in. And on the PS5, just restart the thing or full on shut it down, wait 30 seconds and turn it back on. That should probably fix the issue. Issue. So now that we got the negatives out of the way, let's talk about some of the biggest positives with this update. And the first one is the ability to hide games within your library. This one's actually pretty exciting for me because going into the PS5 and seeing literally everything I own in the library section that I can play on the console is just way too much stuff at any given time. So all you need to do now if it's bugging you is just hover over the game you want to hide, hit the options button, and then hit the hide button. You can also filter your library to show all your hidden games in case you want to go back and play one later. It's a perfect feature that works exactly how it should. One thing I've complained about a lot with the PS5's UI is that they just left out a lot of core features from the PS4 UI that were actually pretty good. It used to be kind of complicated to see if your PS Plus save game was actually on the console and being used for a game when you start it, but now all you have to do is hover over the game and hit the options button and you can check the save cloud status. And that's just a good feature to have overall. You can upload from there, you can download from there, it's exactly how it should be. The biggest update I've seen people excited about though involves HDR, which we actually did a video on. And the big problem with the PS5 is that no matter what, it would launch every single game on your console in HDR mode, and that would kind of screw up the black levels in games that didn't support HDR the right way. But now you can set it so it only uses HDR if a game supports HDR. And that's, that's how it should have been from the start, so I don't want to give them too much credit, but they fixed that pretty quickly when people started complaining about it, so that's good. Changing the setting is actually pretty easy. You just go to settings, screen, and video, and then go to video output, and you can mess around with the HDR settings there. I would set it to only use when supported because then you're just gonna get the best picture either way for every game you're playing. Another feature you can turn on in that same menu is the ability for the console to tell whether or not a game has 120 hertz mode, and then turn it on if it is available. I've also seen a lot of people complaining that they bought 120 hertz display only to find they're not supported by the console, but it looks like Sony actually included a lot more different displays in their list of supported devices. So if you got one just for the PS5 and it didn't work and you're just playing in 60 hertz mode, try setting it to 120 now because it might be supported. Going back to that marquee feature, which is being able to move games over to external storage and then move them back when you want to play them. If a game is on external storage, there's now a little icon that shows that, which seems like table setting for that next update, which is going to allow 
allow us to put our own NVMe drive into the console and use it to actually store and play games. They'll have a different icon based on where the game is stored. Another small addition that I really like is that now you can actually get to the trophy list from a trophy's card. So if you pull up the card menu and you select a trophy, all you have to do is hit options and then you can just go straight to the trophy list and see all of the trophies for a selected game. I don't know why, but when the console launched, it was pretty hard to just get to the trophy menu if you were in a game. So I'm glad that they're giving us trophy hunters some love here with this update. I'm sure you guys have noticed that when you turn on your PS5, you're confronted with ads for games you don't have getting big updates. I know the biggest offender there is Fortnite. And one of the cool things you can do now is just change the games you follow so that you'll actually see updates from games you're really playing, not Fortnite every single time. It's always Fortnite. All you have to do is go into settings, save game settings, and then followed games. And once you're in that list, you can uncheck or check the ones you wanna see when you turn on the PS5. Another cool thing with trophies is that now if there's a hidden trophy in a game, all you have to do is go into the game's trophy list and hit square, and then you can reveal the requirements for unlocking that hidden trophy. Before, you'd have to go to PSN profiles or IGN or something. So it's nice to see Sony baking this stuff into their console because yeah, it's cool that the developers have hidden trophies trophies that you're supposed to unlock because they might have spoilers, but if you want to see them, you can reveal them on your actual console now, and that's good. The last big change I'm highlighting with this update is the ability to control downloads from the control center. So the control center is the mini menu that comes up when you hit the PS button, and before, all you could see is just download progress in that list. But now, if you hit the PS button and slide over, you can manage your downloads, you can open them, you can pause them, you can do anything you want just from control center. You don't gotta quit the game you're playing, and it's yet another good quality of life change that should have been there for day one but isn't for some reason. All right guys that's all I have for you today on the spring update for the PS5. All in all it's a pretty good update. They have some stuff they still need to do like let me expand the storage of my PS5 but they're heading in the right direction. I've got my fingers crossed that if you haven't updated yet and you go to do it after this video it doesn't brick your console but if you have any issues just head over to the PlayStation subreddit and they'll probably help you out. I don't know them, they might not help you out. They might tell you to go kick rocks, but that's the place I would check if I ran into any problem. Let me know if you ran into anything crazy down in the comments below, and remember to stay PS ready, subscribe, and set your notifications to all. As always, my name is Jimmy Champagne, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.